Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setup. We're not going to dive too deep into setup because that's what's going to happen in the next few sessions. But just to get a bit of an overview, we're going to look at themes and branding. We're going to look at company settings, users, profiles, login history, and the setup audit trail. So let's head into Salesforce and let's head into setup. So here we are in Salesforce and the first thing we're going to do is head into setup. So we need to head to the gear icon, hit setup, and that's going to open up Salesforce setup for us. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is really to do with Salesforce customization. And if we have a look for themes and branding in the quick find search bar, you'll see that we can open up all the themes and brands we have within Salesforce. Now we can use pre-existing templates or we can create our own by selecting new theme. This means that you can really customize Salesforce to match your branding. If we head to the quick find search bar again, we're just going to type in company settings and this time we're going to click on company information. This is a fantastic page that shows you all the information about your company and your org. You can edit your company information, including the address, fiscal year, contact details, default locales, languages and time zones. When you do edit your locale, languages and time zones, data in Salesforce appears in the locale, so telephone numbers may be structured differently, as well as a couple of other things. But even though you've set a default locale, language and time zone, users can still set their own just by using the locale settings that they can find in their personal settings. You can also see the data usage of the org. That's broken down into the data space and file space. Data space is used by records, whereas file space is used by attachments. We can also see the Salesforce org ID and the Salesforce edition. If your org uses multi-currencies, this is where it would be enabled from. But remember that once you enable it, you cannot disable it. That's really important to remember. Once it has been enabled, you will then use the currency setup to add currencies and set the exchange rate. You can also set when the fiscal year starts. However, if you wanted to use a custom fiscal year rather than a standard one, you would need to use the fiscal year tab on the left hand side. And then you have the really important section, the licenses section. From here, you can see what licenses have been used and what are available. You can also see some information about permission set licenses, feature licenses and usage based entitlements. Before we head out of setup, let's take a look at the users page. So in the quick find search bar, let's type in users and we'll open that page. So this is where you create users. You could create single users from here or you can create multiple users from here. If you are creating more than 10 users, then you'll probably want to use something such as data loader, but don't worry about that. And when you create a user, there are a few things that you should know. They must have a last name, an alias, an email address, a username that is unique across all Salesforce orgs and is in an email format, and they must be assigned a user license and a profile. You can reset passwords for users from here, and you can also unlock them if they become locked. That usually happens when users have entered the wrong password too many times. If we click into a user, you'll be able to see that we can see much more information about them. We can see all of their contact details, what license they are using, what profile they have, and a lot, lot more. It's from this page that you would freeze a user or deactivate them. The freeze button would appear next to the change password button and would lock that user out of the org. Their license would still be consumed, meaning that we couldn't assign it to somebody else. To deactivate a user, we just need to edit their user record and then uncheck the active checkbox. Once we save the record, the user is deactivated and their Salesforce license is good to use again. So why would you freeze a user rather than deactivate them? Well, in some circumstances, a user cannot be deactivated until configuration has been carried out to remove them from automations. In that case, you would freeze a user and then once you've carried out the work, you could just reconfigure and deactivate them. While we're here in setup, let's also have a look at profiles. Now profiles are used to set a baseline level of access that a user has in Salesforce. You can then increase their access using permission sets. 
it is important to know that you cannot edit a standard profile and a standard profile is just one that comes out of the box with Salesforce. You can either create a custom profile or you can clone that standard profile and make the changes you want to make and then save it as a new profile. Next, let's take a look at login history. And here we can see the last 20,000 records of user logins for the past six months. If we need any more, we can download them. You can see the username, the login time, the IP and many more details. And before we finish, let's cover the setup audit trail. This is where you can find the most recent 20 changes that have been made to your org. Just as with login history, you can download the last six months changes if you need. So before we finish, let's just have a recap of what we've covered this session. We've talked about themes and branding. We've looked at company settings. We've opened up users, looked at profiles. We understand what the login history is. And we also know what the setup audit trail is and what information all of these contain.